ready to explore the latest trends in real estate? What are innovators in building planning for the future? The Ralph Bivens Project digs deep into the minds of key players in the industry and discussions with today's thought leaders. I'm Ralph Bivens. As a journalist who's covered the real estate development industry for decades, I invite you to join me as we probe for new ideas and projects that will be making headlines soon. We love to ask hard questions to interesting people. When you've done over 100,000 interviews, you seem to get enlightening answers. Don't forget to download and review this podcast on Apple, Spotify, and wherever you get your audio inspiration. You can also watch and subscribe on YouTube or visit realtynewsreport.com. Welcome. This is Ralph Bivens with the Ralph Bivens Project. We're here today with John Moody of the Moody Law Group. He's an attorney that specializes in commercial real estate. He's board certified that way with the state. And he's he's done a lot of transactions and a lot of leases and other things. You know, I think I've even seen his resume you know, broke or was involved in the legal work and selling a, a home building company and things of that nature. Uh, so he's he's got some deep experience in, in this market in, in Texas, and so we are really glad to have you today, John. Well, thank you for having me. Uh, I'm a big uh, I'm a big fan of your newsletter and and uh, and your podcast, and I'm excited to be here. <laughs> Thanks. Well, uh, if you're now just uh, you know, tuning in to Houston, I guess what happened to us recently is uh, Hurricane Barrel, a Category One, uh, it came through a few days ago and really. Uh, it disrupted a lot of things a lot more than what was expected and uh even though it wasn't the most powerful storm it did a lot of uh, wind damage and it did a, and has knocked out a lot of utilities power things of that nature uh what what are you hearing from uh from your folks uh, clients and colleagues out there about how that this the outages are impacting them yeah, you know, it's it's and it's all it's it's all over the board. So you have, you know, businesses that are still closed and unable to operate, you know, restaurants, uh, you know, right down the street from from my office are, are still closed. They don't have have, have power. Um, businesses, uh, you know, I've been talking to to attorneys uh, who are, you know, working off their cell phones, trying to work off of uh, <laughs> I talked to a woman who who was uh, had her had her laptop plugged into her uh, her car. And was uh, running the AC off her car and trying to trying to do do a deal. You've got homes that are you know that I, my my assistant her had a water leak and the ceiling fell 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 to the floor and and you know it's just it's it's a mess. And so my firm, you know, I've got uh, eleven people that work work here and and um, you know, we still have uh, I think six people without power. And so you know it's it's it, it impacts us in that way because people are trying to figure out, um, you know, repairs and, and that, that type of stuff. And then businesses that are unable to operate and, and dealing with, uh, not having any, uh, any power. Um, and then insurance claims and, 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 and damages and, and all that kind of stuff. We, we had uh, a bunch of, I think three deals that were supposed to close on Monday. And, uh, you know, one of the eight, I had one client that was trying to buy some property from an out of state seller and, they're being all frustrated that we weren't closing. And, you know, I'm going, well, it's kind of why we have force majeure clause in our contracts is for stuff like this. You know, the title company's closed, the banks are closed, you know, nobody's offices are closed. That's kind of why we have it. And, you know, it's just going to roll a couple of days and we'll get it closed. Um, but, you know, most people are pretty accommodating, especially people from Houston. They, they understand this kind of stuff. And, and, you know, from the real estate community, you know, most of us just sort of give each other extensions and, and work through it. Yeah. I, and some of this, you know, with, with this storm, which hey, we had a lot of rain, but there were, it was, we seemed like it downed a lot of trees and things, which of course they say uh, leads to you know, power outages, no electricity, the, the wires, uh, the wires on the poles get knocked down by tree, tree branches are breaking or something. And that, uh, this exacerbates the problem. And so we have a lot of people without electricity. And um, I have heard, you know, of talk of 
it's been discussed, why don't we bury more of these lines? And it seems kind of like, that sounds like a, a good question. <laughs> and, but they say, oh, it's going to be ex prohibitively expensive to, uh, to do that. But I don't know. What do you think? I mean, that's that's really what you hear. It's just it's cost prohibitive. And, and you know, you look um, kind of where my office is on West Alabama, kind of between Kirby and Buffalo Speedway and, and kind of in this area, uh, the upper Kirby district, which I think is a TERS or a management district, um, they have spent some extra money when they rebuilt Kirby. They, they buried the power lines and, and they started doing the burying the power lines. I know along West Alabama, they're getting ready to do this section right out in front of my office i think in the near future and part of that plan is is to bury it but you know you're 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 having a you know a, a ters or a you know a management district kind of incur those additional costs and you know i don't think center point is is going to do it um and i know in some of the master plan communities uh they they do spend the money to, to bury a, a lot of the the, the utilities and, and the the power and you know, I, I think it would be smart. I wish, you know, Westview, where I live, when they redid all their streets and stuff, um, uh, it's probably been about 10 years ago. Um, I really wish they would have done it because we still have all the, you know, all the poles running through the backyards and power lines in the backyards and the you know, street thrown up all in them. And, you know, it just takes one gust of wind for one of those branches or trees to blow over onto them and shut everything down for, uh, you know, for a few days. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. I, I don't know. It's like, well, we, we pay to have guys come around and chop, you know, big V-shaped things and, and go through the branches and make them ugly. So we live with ugly limbs, you know, yeah. around. It's like, uh, that's, uh, you wonder, would it be well, better, no, better off? Yeah, if somebody somebody fix, fix all this stuff from this this one storm, you know, and then we had that derecho thing a, a month or so mm -hmm. ago and, and cause billions of dollars in damage, you know? So it's like, well, how many times do you have to go through it? Well, of course, this is, uh, we also publish realty news reports in a lot of our, uh, and that's online right now, and um, if you, realtynewsreport.com, but a lot of our, our listeners are here on, on the podcast are, you know, familiar with the real estate industry and so they hear a uh, john moody and they think well you know we, there, there's a lot of a lot of moody's in in the real estate industry here in houston uh, and i think you're you're part of the family aren't you <laughs> yes sir uh, that, that's true I, I think um yeah my family's been in houston a, a long time my my great grandfather started a lawyer's title company downtown uh, I think in the thirties, uh, you know, so, uh, a long time ago, my, my grandfather was in, was a developer here, here locally. My uncle, uh, Dan Moody Jr. Started, um, uh, Moody Rambin in the late sixties. My, my cousin is, is, is running it. My cousin, Dan Moody, the third is running that. My, um, my dad is, is in the business. He, he currently runs a, a land fund called Parkside Capital. And I've got a cousin. I got cousins in the home building business, and and uh, my younger brother. Both my younger brothers are in the real estate business. Uh, uh, one is uh, kind of does shopping center development, and and the other uh, has has a, a fund that he runs at, at Partners Real Estate. So, there we've got a lot of a lot of folks in the in the business. Hey, well that's right. Okay, well, and and you're John S. Moody Jr. and you're head of the Moody Law Group. Uh, on yes, West sir. Alabama. Okay. Not far from Lamar High School or something, I guess. No, I can I can, you know, walk out my uh my 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 front door here and, and, and maybe hit it with a nine iron. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> right down the street. Okay. All uh, right. Okay. Let's let's talk a little bit about some of the, the segments. You work in a lot of different areas of real estate and have clients in those areas. And of course at one area segment that we've been concerned about and has some negative stats that continue to happen is, is the office market yeah and, um, right now i just saw some you know new num second quarter numbers out of collier saying the overall vacancy rate for the houston area is 26.9 percent at the end of the second quarter 
and a year ago it was 26 percent so it's up you know 90 basis points in um, in one year which is in, that's 26.9 is pretty high uh, yeah so tell, tell us tell me a little bit about your thoughts about uh, office and what's happening there yeah um and you know a lot of it is kind of what I read, and then I can kind of tell you what what I what I see from from my little my little window in, into the, the the office world. But you know, you you've got you know a lot of office space here in, in Houston and you know all over the country that that is vacant, and then also underutilized, meaning uh, people just aren't coming aren't coming to the office uh, as much as they used to, a lot of, a lot of work from home, uh, a lot of, you know, people are kind of rethinking how, how they're, they're using office space. And that's, you know, having a, a major impact, you know, like downtown, not, not just with the office buildings, but all over, you know, all the, all the restaurants and the dry cleaner, everybody that kind of, uh, uh, survives or, or, or thrives off, off of the foot traffic and having people, uh, around. Um, one thing that's a little, one kind of bright star in, in the office market and it's it's a little strange but all the new buildings that have been built in the last five years are pretty much full and you're kind of going well why would anybody build a new building you know in, in, a, in an office market that's that's kind of looks terrible and, and the reason is because everybody's rethinking their space people want new energy efficient space that's close to amenities and you kind of look at the where these new buildings, um, you know, from the, the the ones that Heinz have built, you know, downtown. Um, we mentioned Moody Ram and my cousin. My cousin built two buildings um, out on on the west side of town, near near town and country village, kind of Bowie mm -hmm. Memorial area, and and they're full with 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 you know, kind of class A tenants. Um, uh, and the reason is, you know, it's 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 brand new. They've got great great floor plate great well-sized floor plates they're they're close to restaurants and, and amenities um uh, fitness and, and all those things and and i think from what you read and, and hear is you know if we're going to have office space we want to have great office space we want to have efficient office space and we want to have office space that our employees actually want to go to you know and 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 having those amenities close i, I think is what's 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 kind of setting them apart but what you're seeing is you know, if a company, let's say, you know, a big a big company had four floors, you know, in a in, in a kind of a class B building, what they're doing is they're taking less space in these new, new buildings. And so they're going maybe from four to two, and 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 the new building is getting leased up, but they're leasing it up and with with a with a tighter um, floor plate, a uh, much more efficient uh, floor plate for these for these companies. And so if a company was taking a hundred thousand feet, maybe they're going into fifty, and and that that's good for the new buildings but from the overall market the overall real the overall office market it's it's bad and so we're going to end up you know and it, it takes a long time for all the you know leases are usually five to ten years you know on, on a typical office lease mm -hmm. and so it takes a long time for all this stuff to kind of roll through and and i think the net result is we're gonna have a lot more vacancy in these older buildings and then what do you do with it and i don't i don't i don't if I had a great answer for that, I'd, <laughs> That's I'd be really great. If I, had, if I had a great answer, and, and there's a lot of smart people working on it. You know, there's a lot of smart people trying to figure that out. Whether whether it's convert some of these old buildings into residential, and um, some folks are are, are trying that. Um, uh, you know, the, kind of the craziest idea that I heard was was convert them into like an indoor farm. You know, convert some to like an indoor farm, and I thought that was a joke, but it's actually. Uh, something that that is that is occurring and and, and people are looking at it because they have tons of power you know they got water and and uh and it's you know uh apparently it can work i, I haven't seen it i would love to see how that works but if somebody's uh, doing it down at the esperson building uh i don't know how much but about maybe ten thousand feet or something they're doing they have a little indoor hydroponic farm you know that uh, I, I why not <laughs> yeah <laughs> It's crazy it's crazy we have that much excess and you got to turn to something like that to this to do it and i think the other thing that seems to be talked about nationally at least and we're talking about locally you know uh, downtown houston association you know they're they're uh, central houston association they're uh, they're really um trying to get some incentives going you know to uh maybe the city can give them a tax break if you're 
taking the old building, converting it into apartments. And everybody knows we don't have enough places to live, but uh, we got too much office. It sounds like a marriage made in heaven, but mm. it's easier said than done, I think. Yeah. Oh, and, and one thing I, I forgot to mention is, is hotel or in hospitality. They, they have had some 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 success oh. converting, uh, you know, old office and into uh, into hotels and, and hospitality uh, uses. And, and um, you know, I think that's that is a you know, that has has seen some success. So but, I, you know, like like everything, it, it takes a lot of money, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, and time to do it. And, and uh, it's. Uh, it's it's you know it'll take a while to kind of work through all this i i expect yeah and by the way guys uh and and just uh if you got a small business or you're getting ready to do a transaction sell something lease something in just a minute in just a few minutes uh john's going to give us uh, a couple of basic tips to uh, <laughs> to look at the, the, hey, what to have on your to-do list if you're getting ready okay. to do it, go to the closing table anytime soon. So uh, we'll get to that in just a moment. <laughs> okay. we'll, we'll, uh, everything's on the record too, don't we? <laughs> All right. Uh, the other thing I get, okay, so office, I but I don't know. I, who knows? We know the way it's headed and it's hard to see a, a major turn and, um, in another direction now but we've been surprised before Houston surprises before and um something can happen something can take off in a big way and we just don't know but right now <laughs> that the, the scenario described is that's the way it's aimed and it's hard to see it a big turn but it can happen and i guess uh the other uh, you, you know, you're involved, I guess, retail, shopping centers, things like that. Uh, what are you feeling about that segment right now? That that segment has held up pretty, pretty strong um, and, and kind of consistently for, I mean, for a long time, certainly what, what I call the, you know, the, the triple net kind of ground leases, that stuff has been trading uh, at, at very high values. So, that's like your, you know, your bank ground leases, your, your fast food ground leases that, that, you know, they're just paying rent and, 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 uh, they've built their own facility, they built their own restaurant or bank facility, and they're just paying ground rent that, that those retail assets have, have really been trading, um, at, you know, I, I wish I had some statistics for you, but, but we do a ton of those types of deals on, on the buy side and the sell side, uh, you know, every year. And, and those values have, have held, um retail like new shopping center development which is is something that I've, I've done probably more of anything in my career just you know big big chunk of my time and, and work has been on on shopping center anchor you know kind of big grocery store anchored or or, or, or strip centers type type work and 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 those have done those have been doing very well uh here locally and 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 around the state it's, it seems those values have, have held up uh, you can get financing for them. Uh, you can get um, tenants that are still, you know, e expanding in, in this area. And it, it really kind of goes back to population growth and demographics and, and all that kind of stuff. And Houston uh, has, has had tremendous growth. And all the demographics from all those smart people at Rice are, are, are indicating it's going to continue to grow. And I think that's been, you know, pushing a lot of um, retail growth. And when I say retail, retail is not what it used to be. Retail used to be you know, you think like clothing stores and that kind of stuff. And, and, and now it's, it's, it's restaurants. It's, it's a lot of these entertainment type, type, type uses, you know, family type, uh, uh, uh uses, um, uh, fitness, you know, it used to be when you did a shopping center, a, a lot of the, the anchor tenants would want, would, did not want any fitness uses or, or very limited amount of fitness. And now fitness is, is a huge part of, of, you know, retail, right? And and then and then medical. You know, you, you you've got doctors and dentists and orthodontists are, are all getting into uh, you know, more retail in, environments, and and so all that seems to be going you know well. And so a big chunk of what you know what I do is is on the retail side, and and uh, it still seems to be very healthy. Do you have to have a grocery anchor to uh, make that go? 
Um, well, that's kind of like the, the the goal. You know, the goal. Everybody, every retail developer. That's that they would they would love that. You know, that's that's kind of the 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 the, uh, the the gold standard, right? But but a lot of them. You know, these days, you know, there's a lot of um, you know certainly the 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 uh, home improvement uh, anchors. Uh, you know, the Lowe's, the Home Depots, the, those types of things. Target. You know, those, those types of, of store. But Target now usually has a grocery component. Walmart usually has a as a grocery component true, yeah. uh, to it. Um, but you know, then a lot of the strip centers. Um, uh, my brother just built one. It's got a kind of a coffee shop on one end and a, and a credit union on the other, and it's kind of filled. It's got dentist and you know, that that type of, of of uses kind of in the middle. Um, and, uh, you know, you can, you can make it work. Yeah. That's, that's cool. Uh, I do notice, you know, I'm just driving around uh, if you're on Bellway eight, you know, there's a tremendous amount of uh, new warehouses uh, in the last five years. It's amazing. The areas that used to be vacant fields now are, are covered with millions and millions of square feet of warehouses and you're going, Hey, we're, we're, we need some of the warehouses, you know. The uh, the industrial market has been on fire, and then the the pandemic just accelerated it. And and uh, there is some rule of thumb, okay? It's like for every for every percentage growth of of uh, online sales, you need like a billion square feet of, of of warehouse space to service it. And and you see, you know, if you drive out west, north, you, you know. Um, you can see all these massive Amazon facilities that, that they've built, you know, to try to ring the ring the city. And uh, now it's like a lot of times you order something online and it shows up the same day. You're like, how is that? How is that possible? Where did you come from? Um, and and you know, you, you look at the facilities they're building, uh, you know, in and around the port and on the east side of, of Houston to, to bring in all these these goods. Um, and you know, just the the warehouse space. I mean. Driving out I ten through through Katy up to Brookshire, uh, north of town. Uh, really, a, a big chunk of that, uh, a big chunk of that growth has just been the the growth and in, in online, you know, re, uh, online sales. Well, yeah, it's it, it is amazing. It's amazing, and, and when you do it with like what you said about you order something, I, you know, if you order from Amazon, it's there like that. And it, man, I could have got in the car, driven to one place. Oh, they don't have that. Drive to two or three places, spend an hour, or you can just go order it on your Amazon and, you know, one minute or less and you're done. You know, that's, that. it's hard to beat that. You know, I don't know if it's, <laughs> you have a lot of vehicles on the road. I mean, yeah, that's, that's the cost a lot in, in the big picture for them to have all the trucks and, the drivers but somehow they make it work you know and i was gonna i was gonna mention one other driver is the, is the infrastructure act and and uh you're seeing like we we represented uh a huge uh indian uh solar panel company that leased a huge warehouse on, on the west side of town um mm -hmm. i mean huge and you know they're they're wanting because of all the incentives and stuff they're 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 opening the floor here i represented a belgian uh company that that's that's doing um uh, like hydrogen fuel cell, it's 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 related to hydrogen fuel cells, and and it's it's all you know related to, to this infrastructure act, where they can come in and get you know get get tax credits and and, and money to 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 build this to manufacture stuff here in in the United States, and that is I mean and it's it's a little bit like um uh you know the incentives are are so important it's it's really driving a, a lot of growth in Houston I think is going to be a, a, a continue to be a big beneficiary of that. Yeah, that this will this is a good thing. <laughs> we like to hear about companies relocating to, to Houston and helping our economy, making jobs for people. Yeah, the manufacturing uh, side is, is, I think, is very exciting to to have you know new manufacturing uh, you know coming to to the United States, but also particularly here uh, to the Houston area. I think is is fabulous. Uh, one of the area of growth since we're talking about suburban growth you know, the land market and, and uh, suburban land that's being a lot of it, it has been pretty strong in recent years. So, uh, the 
home builder subdivision develop, developers uh, building communities for new home construction. Um, what's this? Is that still going to keep happening, or what do you see there? A absolutely, and and this is this is a little bit counter counter another counterintuitive thing, right? And and, mm -hmm. um, and I wish I could I wish I was better with remembering statistics, but you know we we had such so many years of low interest rate and and so many people bought houses and locked in you know 15 yeah. 30 year mortgages and so it's something like 80 percent of existing homes have mortgage rates below you know four or five i, I don't remember the, the but but have you know a, a very low interest rate right and so to sell your house and, and go and get a you know go get a new loan uh, housing prices have gone up and I'll just tell you with, with my house, you know, I could sell my, you know, I had a broker tell me, oh, you can make a bunch of money selling your house. I'm like, well, yeah, but where am I going to go? You know, it's like I, I could buy for the same money. I could buy a smaller house. Right. Or, or, um, and I'd get a higher, you know, higher interest rate on my mortgage. And so the, the inventory of existing homes is really low. It's real tight. Um, and like we talked about demographics, there's a lot of job growth here in, in Houston locally. There's a lot of people moving here. I, you, you can see it just driving around. You see, you know, New York plates, you, you see uh, Kansas plates, you see uh, California plates, uh, you know, people, Pennsylvania, I saw, I saw some Pennsylvania plates this morning, people moving, you know, relocating and moving, moving to Texas, moving to, to, to Houston. And so what are you going to do? Where are you going to buy? Well, really, the, the, the what people don't realize is the home, the new home market is is on fire. All, all these local home builders are, are doing great. And, and, but you know, they're having to go out and, and, and buy land and, and, and put lots on the ground. There's, you know, your, your typical developers. Uh, we, we do have a very strong uh, development community here uh, in, in town and, and they're putting lots on the ground and, and that market is, is, is on fire. I mean, you just drive out north and west and eat. I mean, there's, you know, you can go down to Pearland, go up to Conroe and, and the woodlands, drive around, go, go west, uh, you know, west all the way i mean full shear <laughs> brookshire you know these these towns that used to seem like they were you know far away are, are now you know have, mm -hmm. have robust uh home building and and and, and subdivisions and, and kind of these master plan communities being built out there and it's um that market is is doing doing very well right now and everybody's like oh well these high interest rates are going to kill kill that market and that's it, it really hasn't been the case just because of these this interesting dynamic where you don't have your existing um, uh, existing product uh, for sale. Yeah, so the inventory is low, the prices are up, and, and then and then then you got the builders doing the incentives like, uh, uh, we'll buy down your mortgage rate so you know to five and a half percent, so you don't have to buy a new house where you're going to have to pay seven percent. Yeah, uh, that is that does trick for a lot of consumers. You know. Mm -hmm. That is one common uh, incentive that the, that the builders are doing is, is buying down the rates uh, to kind of help get the, you know, help. That's one thing is, is you've got a pool of new buyers uh, and, 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 you know, on average, they have a certain amount of money they can put down. They can get, they can qualify for a certain type of loan. And, and if you can buy down that mortgage uh, to a, to a lower rate, the pool of applicants that can buy that that house increases significantly and that's why they're doing it is it just it gives it, it gives them a much larger pool of, of buyers yeah. well builders builders know how to adapt and uh, and stay alive make money and keep buying and selling building houses and selling they, they they're adaptable group i, I believe <laughs> seems but, like they're, they they're, are and I mean, it's such a huge uh, engine of growth in, in the United States, the home building. I mean, the, the amount of people that it employs and the construction and the amount of you know, materials they're buying and stuff. It's it's a huge engine of growth uh, for, for our economy. For the city, you know, we, like like you said, uh, to buy land and uh, to, to get it uh, at a price that makes sense and and just the availability of it is getting harder so we're going out where it's now you know way up 290 you know and you're way out interstate 10 you know like brookshire you know it's it's it's, it's pretty incredible um 
in the South, you know, the, the 288 wasn't that long ago that, you know, that there was not much happening on two, you know, like, well, I guess it is 30 years now, but yeah. the way that's come on, you know, I said, well, you know, it used to be you can drive into the medical center really fast and you could. Uh, you yeah. Know, but, and, but it has led to, you know, the city expanding farther and farther out, uh, not necessarily the city limits, but the metro area. Do you ever worry about, uh, you know, sprawl or wherever they call it about uh, this is getting too spread out? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I do. And, and uh, you know, it's, 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 um, it's tough because so much of my, my business and my family's business is, is, um, is, is built on, on development. And, and, uh, you know, so I, I do appreciate, you know, the no zoning of Houston. I think it, 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 it really allows, um, you know, a, a lot of great stuff to get, to get done. Um, but, you know, you, you worry about it, but what, what you're seeing, right, is, is you're seeing, you know, these communities like the woodlands, you know, that have really kind of grown up in the last, uh, you know, 20 years. And it's, 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 it's got its own, uh, world, you know, it's got its own restaurants. It's got its own office. It's, 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 you know, a lot of people don't need to <laughs> commute to the city. They live, they end up living there. Same with Katie. I mean, Katie has grown up in the last 20 years, uh, from, from being, you know, really small town to really being more, more urban and, and having a lot more, um, you know, you got the, medical center west right? you know it's like you don't have to you don't have to drive into town and, and you're seeing that in the woodlands. you know there's a, there's a medical center up up uh, in the woodlands and so you're seeing once that kind of happens you're seeing like all the growth in conroe and magnolia and willis and all this stuff and it's like well i i don't have to go all the way down to to, to cbd you know houston or, or down to the medical center i've got services here i've got great restaurants here um, you're not as There's office buildings and oh, oh, office sorry. buildings in the woodlands or whatever. You don't have, from Willis to the woodlands, not that bad of a commute. You know? No, right, and and that's kind of you know that's kind of what I see happening is 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 some of these. Um, you know, I remember one of my my friends moved out to the woodlands when we were little, and I mean there really wasn't a whole lot out there. You know, back in, back in the '80s, you know, it was uh, you know the the you know the, there was a dream. I think I think this is. The, the dream is coming in, you know, is, is coming into reality, but, but it, you know, didn't look like it does now. <laughs> there wasn't a whole lot to do out there. Um, and, and now it's, it's, I mean, there's, there's, you got everything up there. Um, so I, I think you're seeing, you know, some of that happen as, as we sprawl out, you're kind of seeing these different, um, uh, you know, hubs or cities, you know, kind of growing, growing up, uh, where, where, um, people don't really think about coming in and using it. And now with, you know, video conferencing and, and, and remote work, uh, people are really, you know, having a different, um, uh, view about living, you know, living in different, different areas. Yeah. I remember, uh, you know, maybe 20 years ago or so the people were talking about ed cities and, you know, this, they have everything they want. And, you know, this is kind of what we're seeing now, you know, it's, it's uh, these edge cities around the metro area here and they have they have works they have jobs there they've got office buildings medical and they so we're going to end up with like a string of one cities and who knows <laughs> all these little cities packed together um, just keep going you know from right galveston to willis <laughs> right <laughs> And I mean, I, I remember, you know, we uh, we used to go up to New Braunfels a bunch and and kind of like between San Antonio and Austin, you know, there's, you know, San Marcos and New Braunfels and, and there, but there was a lot of empty, you know, empty uh, highway there. And now, I mean, it's, it's pretty much full between San, that I-35 from San Antonio to, to Austin is, is, is pretty full. You know, I mean, it's incredible how much of that has been built out. Um, and I-10, you, know, you go out I-10, it, it, it pretty much goes all the way, you know, the, the development pretty much goes all the way until you get to Sealy, and then you have a little break before you get to Columbus, but I mean, you're not seeing the cows like you used to. <laughs> you're right. You're absolutely right. And it, and it is, and you, you got a good point about that uh, San Antonio Austin thing. I was at the Express News, the young journalist there when uh, Henry Cisneros was... Uh, 
mayor and he talked about that you know the austin san antonio corridor and, and of course he'd like to be on the included in that because he wanted to get some of that tech growth down in in san antonio but in now uh and of course he was also a proponent of the the texas triangle idea of right a, the th these three prongs of the triangle um and, and that's where that's where the whole who knows you know another 50 years it's going to be a pretty solid piece of population in in the Dallas, Houston, San Antonio, Austin triangle. It's, Absolutely, it's, that's it's going to be a different place. Uh, okay, okay, we um, you know talked about uh, John's tips, uh, the things to think about if you're getting ready to uh, to do a do a deal. I, I get what about if leasing if you're you, know, you have a small company or you got a big company whatever but you're ready to, to uh you're ready to uh lease some more move your offices go somewhere else so what what you, what would you tell these guys to that they need to think about yeah uh that, that's a great question and, and you know I've, I've helped small businesses and i've helped big businesses re relocate um uh, over the years and and, and really you know, I, I would say the first thing you ought to do is, you know, if you're if you're re relocating a business in an office environment, um, I, I would tell you the first thing you need to do is hire a, a, a very good broker that has experience doing office work. Because because what, what people don't realize is is the landlord, if you're a tenant, the landlord pays the tenants broker. So you can as a tenant, you can hire the, the, the best, the, the most expertise uh, in the city. And, and they're effectively working for you, but they get paid by the landlord. So it doesn't cost you anything. And, and they, they can help you analyze, you know, what the market is. They can help you figure out where you want to be uh, in, in terms of, you know, what, where, where your population, you know, where your employees uh, live and, and, you know, the commute and, and kind of look at all kinds of, you know, analytics of, about, you know, uh, what, what the market is and help you understand, you know, some, some different options and uh, the, the, the great ones around town, they, they, they know all the landlords and they, they know all the other brokers and, and, and can help get you in uh, and, and, and find the, the, the right fit. Um, you know, I would say, uh, you know, often you need to get an architect involved to help you do your, your test fit and make sure you fit. Um, as a self-promote promotion, I, I would tell you hire a, a real estate lawyer that, that has done office leasing before because, you know, uh, I see, you know, in my, in my, I mostly, in most deals I work on, I, I work with other real estate lawyers that I know at other, other firms and, and we work uh, very well together, but every once in a while you get, you know, somebody's hiring their, their brother-in-law who's a, who's a trial lawyer, doesn't know anything about leasing, you know, and, and they just usually make it a lot more complicated than it needs to be, you know, cause, cause most of the real estate lawyers know what to ask for and know, know how to resolve problems and know how to get, get, get an office lease done. So that's, that would be my biggest tip is just just you know don't don't hire your your uh your your cousin who's a who's a residential broker to, to help you with an office lease get an office broker because they're going to add the most value uh to, to the process and then i would tell you at some point get it get a get a really good real estate lawyer involved because they're gonna they're gonna help you get it documented pro properly with a tenant rep uh rep tenant representative uh, real estate guy or woman you know hey they the landlord the owner of the building covers their 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 payment their commission their com yep so yeah and, and so that's great you know it's like hire, hire the best you know, hire, hire the hire, hire who's you know the best in the city or, or or then there's that's one thing about houston we, we have a lot of great um brokerage companies here we're, we're you know a huge market obviously we've got a lot of a lot of um a lot of great firms out there that, that do it and, and just you know hire one of them okay uh, let's switch to uh buying and selling um uh, yeah. so you're getting maybe you're gonna buy buy a land buy some land buy some buy a building buy a center mm -hmm. whatever it is or are you getting ready to to liquidate it or yeah get out here? I tell what do you need to be thinking about if you're uh um, heading heading towards the, the closing table in the next year or so. Or yeah. Well, yeah. Again, I, I would tell you, I would tell you, start with 
with with hiring the right broker too. You know, I'm I'm, I'm promoting my 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 friends who are who are on the on the broker they're gonna side. Love you. They're going to love you, John. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, I it's it, it makes a huge difference, particularly early on. You know, um, a, a lot of you know you see a lot of times I get brought in. I won't say it's too late, but but at at a point where um, mistakes maybe have been made and, and, and it's, they're, they're a little bit harder to, to walk back. Um, uh, you know, on, on the sell side, I think, I think one of the mistakes I see is, is people just, you know what, I want to sell this. Let's just go put it on the market and, and sell it. And I don't need a broker. I'm just going to put it on LoopNet or I'm going to put it, you know, just put a sign out in front and they don't really know what they have, you know? And, and, and um, so, Usually a broker can can come and, and help you understand the value, help you understand some comps. Um, I would tell you on the sell side, maybe get a new survey. And I, I can't tell you like sometimes the buildings are or you got an encroachment issue, you've got an easement problem, you've got a fence problem. A lot of this stuff you can solve before you put it on the market. You know, it's it's they're they're not huge things. It's just sometimes it gets more complicated once you have buyers and lenders and banks and other people looking at it, it can be, you know, harder to resolve because you got to, you know, you got to make all these people happy or, or uh, uh, deal with it. Um, on the buy side, same kind of, same kind of advice, you know, I would tell you, get, get the right broker that knows those types of deals because they can help you understand if you're, if you're getting the right kind of value, if you're paying a, a, an okay price for it and help you negotiate the deal, um, the, the letter of intent. Um, but also, you know, get a real estate lawyer uh, that, that's done that type of deal before because they can help you get it documented properly. And then, um, well, you know, the other kind of main thing is, especially on the buy side is, is do your due diligence. I can't tell you how many people want to save money and, you know, they don't want to, they don't want to get an environmental report. They don't want to get a survey. They don't want to go in, you know, you could have a huge problem, you know, like, you know, <laughs> and so it, it, it makes, has this waste back there on the back. Right. You know, that could be a big problem. Right. And and I can't tell you how many how many things I've seen that, that people, you know, bought stuff and and didn't know. You know, they just didn't do their homework. They didn't know they had an access problem. They didn't know they, they had an environmental problem. Or they didn't know uh that the 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 fence uh was was way on the other you know, they didn't have as much property as they thought they were getting. Um, I could go down the list of, of some of the horrors that, that, that horror stories that people have, have ended up with just because they didn't they didn't want to spend money on, on due diligence. And so uh, and that's one thing. I, that's one area where, you know, attorney, I, I think an attorney can, can help you is, is, you know, looking at title, looking at looking at survey. I, I had a guy come to me that, that wanted to, to build um, a two story medical facility uh, at, in, a, in a retail center. He never looked at title, never hired a lawyer, never did any due diligence. And the uh, the shopping center restrictions say you can only have a one story building and you can't have a medical use. <laughs> so, <laughs> Do your homework. Yeah. Right? I mean, that was that was kind of like, and I, I think, you know, any real estate lawyer would have looked at title and, and you know, gone to the first document and told them you, you can't do this. You know, this is not permitted. Um, but, you know, so that, that you, you see that and Anyway, I try to, I try to help people learn from from some of the the stuff I've seen over the years. That's why I have this gray beard. You know, I, I used to I used to look real young, and and uh, and, and yeah, now it's kind of you know you've seen seen I've seen enough over the years. You know, to turn my beard completely gray. <laughs> you keep working at it, you can be like me. You know, no hair either. <laughs> uh, All right, John Moody. Moody Law Group, thank you so much for being on the Ralph Bivens Project today, and uh, we hope we can have you back real soon, man. Thank you so much. I enjoyed it. It's good talking to you. Thanks.